Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's United Church. I'm Reverend Cheryl Bolton. Do not fret because of all the stresses of the world. Come and take delight in the Lord. Leave the unpaid bills, the pile of dirty laundry, the dirty dishes in the street, in the sink. Come and take delight in the Lord. Let us worship. Last week we heard the words of a young poet say at the inauguration, Behold and seek, be bold and seek the light. Be bold and be the light. The light of Jesus is here if we seek it out. Let's join together in a call to worship. Again. Let us come together, let us come together in a call to worship. Come to worship this day, bring with you all your joys and sorrows. Jesus will offer hope. Come to worship this day, believing in the power of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus will bring us healing. Come to worship this day, feeling the presence of God. Jesus will teach us new ways to live. Amen. Let us come before God in a prayer of confession. 
We think we know so much, O oh God, and with our meager knowledge we presume to ju judge others. We arrogantly announce our own righteousness without a compassionate thought. We proclaim your word when it suits us and often only to those with whom we want to associate. We shut out others because of our faulty judgment and our blindness. There have been so many times in which our humble help would have been a blessing to someone. But we've placed our comforts before serving others. In the competing voices of today's world, we have turned around and around, trying to find the way to live. Help us, merciful God, to again listen to you. Help us to truly open our hearts to you. Remind us again of your great love and presence in our lives. Forgive us our foolishness and our stubbornness. Create in us new spirits filled with your love, offering peace and hope to all. In Jesus' name, amen. Quiet your hearts, beloved, for God is speaking to you with love. Rest your spirits, struggling ones, for God will surround you with peace. Open our lives to God's power and presence and do not be afraid. God is with us now and for all times. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. Jesus drives out the evil spirit. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. And the evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. And the people were also amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching? And with authority? He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. So, we just finished reading the story of Jesus casting out an unclean spirit. Now, there are many different ways of defining both unclean and spirit, and there's different arguments for and against both, and even different translations of the Bible define or use different words even to say unclean spirit. But for the purposes of this service, I'm going to look at the wording unclean spirit from a mental health perspective. And there's a reason for this. This week marks both Blue Monday, the theory goes that it's the time of year when we are cold, it's January in Canada, we're cold, we are broke because our Christmas bills are coming in, we may have already broken our New Year's Eve resolutions to live a healthier lifestyle, and it goes on and on, and we become depressed and blue this past Monday was the third Monday of uh, January and it's often dubbed blue Monday but it's also at least here in Canada I don't know about the rest of the world um, Bell Canada Bell the big conglomerate of Bell Canada has um, an initiative called the Bell Let's Talk Day 
And it's an initiative to get conversations going around mental health. And it's to help bring mental health into a spotlight, to help those struggling with mental health issues realize that they're not alone. You're not alone. I'm not alone. We all struggle sometimes. So let's see what this looks like from a biblical perspective and a personal perspective. So do you ever find that your spirit isn't as clean as it should be? And by spirit, I'm referring to the sense, um, your overall mindset, your thoughts, your habits, your inner being, your, if you will, you know, those kind of things. What drives you, what is making you do different think different things and think how you think and how you react to the world around you. So you know the saying, you are what you eat. Well, I think it applies to your spirit too. I think that saying, you are what you eat, I think it started a long time ago in a, in a TV commercial. You are what you eat. And your spirit is that way too. Your spirit becomes what you think, what you say, what you do, etc. And so it's important to know what you're feeding your spirit. What is your spirit feed on? Now, somebody recently asked me that very question. How do you feed your spirit? What do you feed your spirit? And I shamefully realized that uh, I've been starving my spirit, or at least feeding it a very unhealthy diet. And in these days of your stay-at-home orders and COVID and closures and so much going on in the world right now, and not to mention all the other issues going on in the world, it's easy to feed ourselves with a really unhealthy diet. A diet of TV shows, snow, naps, and overeating and snacking, and maybe you're drinking more than you normally would. You're feeding yourselves on unhealthy activities that aren't uplifting and that are harming you spiritually. So we should be finding activities that are uplifting and spiritually healthy and satisfying. Well, how do we do that? Personally, I have a nasty habit of feeding myself on, my spirit, on busyness. I get caught up in the little things that don't necessarily matter and they don't feed my spirit. In fact, they're quite draining. I forget to take time to let Christ in to my life and make room for Christ, which, you know, you would think when I'm doing this recording on a weekly basis, you know, I would have be more aware of that. But sometimes I get so busy with the technical aspect of life or the busyness of answering emails or checking messages that I forget to make time for my spirit. I can't feed somebody else if I'm not feeding myself. And it's a bad habit. I need to stop, drive out that busyness, and let Christ in. So actually next week, I'm doing that. I am going to take time to reconnect with God, to feed my spirit, and a healthier diet. Take some time for us to connect, for the spirit and I to connect. And so I'll be on holidays next week. Can't go anywhere, but I can reconnect with God anywhere. So that's the beauty of it, right? I've also started reconnecting with a spiritual guide again. And I do this every once in a while when I start to feel a little lost. And I want to stress the point that there is no harm, no shame in asking for help. Whether it's from a counselor, spiritual or otherwise, a pastor, a friend, and of course, God. After all, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. <laughs> now I have that stuck in your head. You're welcome. But remember that. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. So go for it. Talk to God. 
Whether you feel the need to kneel on the floor and pray that way, or whether you just lift your eyes to heaven and say, God, give me help. Even if you can't speak the words, God hears it in your heart. All our sins and griefs to bear. To bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God and bear. So please take your worries, take your cares to God. Sweep out that uncleanliness and let God in. But also remember, if you are in crisis, if you need professional help, please do not be afraid to contact your health care provider or here in Canada, the Canadian Mental Health Association, or even 911 if you're at that point. You are not alone. We are here for each other. We need to make the discussion around mental health, especially right now in this time of isolation. We need to make mental health a priority. Please seek the help you need. Pick up the phone. Call a friend, call a counselor. There are many in the phone book. Google it if you have to. Get the help you need. And remember, God's prayer, a prayer is just a whisper away. God is always there to help. You are not alone. Amen. Take care.
Let us join our hearts and come before God with a prayer of thanksgiving and concern. What have we done, Lord? We want to praise you, so we splash your words on screens on a wall. With brightly colored and powerful images, we shout your praises with our hands held high. We teach and preach your word, but we don't listen carefully for you. We're so busy trying to shout above the noise of the day that we don't take time to really listen and know you. The voices of the prophets spoke to people long ago who were too busy and anxious to hear. Their words streamed in the winds of time and have come to us. We need to pay attention to your message offered through them. You are our God, the God of all creation, the God of power and love, whose mercy is offered to us. In Jesus' time, he proclaimed the good news through words and actions, reaching out to those who were troubled, alienated, cast aside. He offered healing and hope to those others turned away. Help us to learn that you alone can heal us and fix those areas in our lives that are wounded and twisted. Help us to understand that you alone can offer to us a new way of life through Jesus Christ. Remind us again that as we have spoken the names of people and situations that concern us, and we pray for your healing touch, that the same touch is offered to us in Jesus' name. Lord, we need to let go of our control issues and place our trust wholly in you, now and forever. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Master, let me walk with Thee In lowly paths of service free Tell me Thy secret, help me bear The strain of toil, the fret of care Help me the slow of heart to move by some clear winning word of love Teach me the wayward feet to stay And guide them in the homeward way Teach me thy patience still with thee In closer, dearer company in work that keeps faith sweet and strong, in trust that triumphs over wrong, in hope that sends a shining ray far down the future's broadening way, in peace that only thou canst give with thee. O Master, let me live. Thank you for joining us this week. 
Next week, uh, there will not be a recorded service as I'm on holidays, but I would tap for you to a little something here next week, some sort of reflection or a link to another service. And I would ask you and invite you to look around you, find out what gives you peace, what feeds your spirit. Sometimes a varied diet is a good thing. We'll see you in two weeks. I'll be back. And now Jesus comes to us offering healing and hope, speaking and acting with authority. Listen to him. Go into this world confident in God's love and healing power. Go in peace and may God's love and peace always be with you. Amen. Amen and have a good week. Bye.